Hello, welcome to a, another, oh my God, I can't believe I'm making a fourth or fifth, I've lost track, video about context-free grammars. So in this video, I'm gonna do something a little scary, um, which is instead of using an engine or library or framework like Tracery or Rita, I'm just going to program a little context-free grammar expansion system without anything at all, just my own wits and fingers. <laughs> We're gonna see how that goes, right? So remember, the idea here is that I have a system, a language that has valid elements of it, valid letters of the alphabet, so to speak. There are um, and a set of production rules. So, and I'm gonna use a very simple set of production rules and try to write a recursive function, a function that references itself to recursively expand this grammar tree. It'll be like magic, I think, or, or there's going to be a lot of problems that are going to happen. Okay, so um, I have pre-existing examples where I've done this, but I, 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 I think I did that many years ago and I ported it from somebody else's examples, namely Alison Parrish's wonderful Python uh, examples, linked to um, Alison's uh, resources on a course called Reading and Writing Electronic Text in this video's description. So the first thing that I want to do is, um, I know I'm going to need some sort of uh, object, probably a JavaScript object, that has a set of rules in it. So, and I could, I could just write these in. Maybe I'll just write them in. <laughs> um, so I could say, I'm, and if I'm kind of like going off of what's here, I could say, okay, a sentence becomes the NV, and a, uh, well, <laughs> I have to go over here and look. The, uh, a noun um, is a cat or a dog. And a verb is a, uh, woo, a, a meows or barks. So again, this is my incredibly lame <laughs> grammar. Boy, we could do so, so much better. And we also have to think, well, what really is going on here? Should I be, what syntax should I use? Like, maybe it makes more sense. I think it might make more sense. I would sort of prefer to do this like have these all be an array because an array is going to be easier for me to work with ultimately. So I'm going to do that, right? I don't want to like have to parse this like pipe symbol and all of that. So what I'm going to consider is an array is an array of options with equal probabilities. Um, and right now the only pos possible sentence is the NV. The only possible ends are cat and dog and the only possible V is meow and bark. So, what I want to do is I want to uh, figure out now I need some sort of expansion algorithm. So what I need to do is I have a start. So my start is just going to be the sentence S. Okay? Now what I need to do is um, let's just make sure this program is kind of, and I have some errors here like I'm missing a comma here. So let me just um, kind of uh, say result equals start and see what happens here. Uh, whoops, I'm in, I don't know where I am. I need want to be, oh, I'm probably, uh, I'm probably running, editing the wrong code. Don't I always do this? No, I'm in the right place. Uh, oh, I just didn't console log anything. Uh, and I'm just going to say create p uh, result. So the idea here is, oops, s. So I want to get more than s. So how do I do this? Well, there's a variety of ways I could, it could sort of think about doing this. But I think what I want to do is I want to sort of build out an array. So I'm going to say expansion equals, um, you know, I could try to use a for loop and maybe run a for loop, a nested for loop to do it multiple generations. But really, this type of system, I don't really have anything in here that's nested. But if I add some nested stuff to it, I'm going to need a recursive algorithm. So I would love to refer you to some videos I have about the concept of recursion, which Typically, in other videos I've made, I've used for graphics drawing. I could make a recursive tree structure and um, a self-similar shape. A recursive something is a, recur a function that's defined recursively is a function that defined def that calls itself. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna come back to that. Uh, but let's just start. Let me start writing this code. Is this a coding challenge? I think it is. <laughs> um, okay. So I have an expansion, and what I want to say is I want to say expand start expansion. Because what I want to do is I want to call a function and I'm going to say here result equals that. So I want to have a result that comes from starting with this 
and I want to pass it an empty array because then I want that array to be filled as it's going through and, and expanding based on the, the rules, so to speak. So I'm going to write this function up here and it gets, uh, I'm, I don't know what to call this, a fr an element, a phrase, I'm just going to call it um, uh, a start, so to speak. And I'm going to call this expansion, which is kind of a little awkward that I'm using the same variable names, but I'm going to do that anyway. OK, so what do I do here? Well, first I need to determine, is start something in the rules? Is it terminal or not terminal? If rules start, right, it does it exist. Is it something in the rules? If it is, what do I need to do? Well, I need to expand whatever, I need to expand one of the possibilities that it might pick. So first what I need to do is I need to pick something. And one of the lovely things I can do in P5 is I can pass an array to a random function. So if I say, give me a random value, right, that's going to be picking, if, if it's getting n, it's going to pick one of cat or dog. And then I need to expand that. So then I need to expand uh, what it picked, and then I need to continue to pass this expansion array. Because this expansion array is just getting filled recursively as this kind of function unfurls. So this is a, I'm going to have to like come back and, and, and this is going to be, I can tell already, this is going to be the, not the kind of video that you need to watch over and over again, but this is going to be the kind of thing that you're going to want to sort of like hand write this code and play act it out or something with a friend uh, to, to sort of figure out what's going on here. Now what if it's not and something that expands? Then, what do I want to do? I want to add it to that array. Uh, expand, push, what I picked. So the idea is that I want this to keep going. Um, and we can think about what the tree, I, I wonder if there's a way I can diagram this to help you, to help make, some, first of all, let's just see if this works. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to, uh, um, what I want to do is I'm going to say result uh, join with, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, let's console log the result. It's going to be an array. Let's see if this even works because I might have made a mistake. Undefined. Hey, undefined. There we go. Ta-da. <laughs> um, all right, so what went wrong? Uh, looking at the chat, uh, rules tart. No, I thought I, someone was saying I made a, a typo there. So let's see if we can um, figure out what's going on. So let's, uh, let's uh, console.log pick, see if that's even working. Ah, so that worked. We got the, uh, and I don't know why I can't, oh, I'm zoomed out. We got the NV sketch line 10, so that worked. Um, and then pick, oh, 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 oh. So here's something that's kind of important, right? Uh, this would have, this would work, I, I haven't been paying attention, but these, when it, these are three different uh, kind of elements that I need to expand. So I hate to do this to you, but I really kind of feel like what this should be is an array inside the array. I could start to spl use split and stuff, but I want to... Um, I want to think about a way that might make sense. And I've missed something here. Oh, I need a quote there. Let me just make this change, um, and then we'll kind of discuss it. This is my own strange way of encoding this. I'm sure any of you watching will come up with a better way, and you will share it with me in the comments, and I will feel embarrassed. That's part of programming, feeling embarrassed. Although, you shouldn't feel embarrassed. It's okay if I feel, I'm going to feel embarrassed because that's, I generally operate in life by feeling embarrassed. But coding is about figuring stuff out and playing around and, and, and iterating to refine things later. So the reason why I'm doing this, ooh, look at that. It auto-formatted it for me. The reason why I'm doing this is because what I want is to have a bunch of options. But one of the options, this is not three possible options. This is expanding S into three tokens, so to speak. This is expanding n into one token or this other one token. So, you know, I could say this or something like the funny cat, whoops, and it would look like this. You know, but the reason why I need to separate this out is because the n or v might be things that need to be expanded. And the truth of the matter is I could just do this, but not if I need to treat these separately as things that might be expanded. So, you know, I could do something different with splitting, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my uh, train of thought here. 
And what I'm going to do now is once I pick something here, I'm picking an array, right? And so what I need to expand is each one of these. So I need to say for var i equals zero, i is less than pick.length i plus plus, and then I want to expand pick index i. So I want to go through and expand the, then n, and then v. Um, and then uh, push. So let's look at this now and see what happens. And we can see, um, oh, I'm still getting undefined at the end. <laughs> so, but I'm getting something promising where I got the NV, then I got cat, then I got barks. So it looks like things are working correctly. Oh, I'm console logging result. Really what I want to console log is expansion. Undefined, undefined, undefined. <laughs> this is promising. So let's look up here. Ah, pick, hmm. Oh, no, 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 I want to push start. So there we go, sorry. So this is the thing coming in. If it is part of the rules, then I need to split it up and expand it. Otherwise, I need to add that to the end. So that's what I was missing there. And now we can see I get the dog barks. And what do I want to do now? The thing that it results in is a, um, uh, an array of elements. And I want to, um, and so I wonder, by the way, if it makes sense for me to just say, return expansion, um, and in that sense, I can have the function also sort of return that array, which is sort of unnecessary, but um, yeah, that makes sort of sense to do that. And then what I can do is I can also say return expansion join with a space, and then now you can see I'm getting these sentences, the dog barks. So now what I have is console log result, create p, oh, there it is, the dog barks. So you can see I'm getting these, and I could do this a bunch of times. Uh, just to get a bunch of different uh, sentences to make sure this is really working. And now I'm going to run this. And we can see, ooh, look at this craziness. Ah, what's going on here? Uh, I made a mistake and I've got to start over uh, each time. Uh, so I want to do that 10 times. So we can see the dog barks, the dog meows, the dog meows, the cat meows. So this, in theory, is working right now. <laughs> and what I would like to do is take somebody else's grammar and apply it in here to see if we can get something that's a bit more sophisticated. So I'm going to pull an example grammar file from um, Allison Parrish. Um, and I believe that is this. So this is a much nicer uh, grammar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just paste it to the top here. And I'm going to put it in comments just to sort of make the argument uh, that, and I feel like the, this cooking show thing should happen where now this video is going to get edited where all of a sudden <laughs> you see the results down here of me translating it. But I'm going to walk through translating one at a time in the archives live stream and we'll see what happens in the video later. Okay, so you didn't have to watch all that, but I went and converted that this grammar which is from an example from Alison Parrish. Thank you, Alison Parrish. And I converted it to this syntax that I developed, which is probably, um, and you can see now I have a slightly more complex sentence. First of all, I have two different options, noun phrase, verb phrase, interjection, noun phrase, verb phrase. And the powerful thing here is that a verb phrase can also include a noun phrase or no noun phrase. So there's the recursive nature of this algorithm of kind of expanding this sort of nested tree is much more apparent now. So let me go and um, I think what I should do is uh, quickly um, create a nice little button to do the generation. Uh, so where am I? I'm going to say button. And I'm going to say uh, button equals create button, generate, and then button uh, uh, mouse pressed, uh, CFG, uh, like the BFG, but a CFG. And then I'm going to say function CFG. And I don't, um, I'm going to uh, expand this grammar and create a paragraph. So let's look and see I have a button. The dichotomy that winds foregrounds that tame seagull. The corsage foregrounds the corsage that foregrounds this amoeba. The corsage amoeba winds. I feel like I messed something up. <laughs> but I'm sure I probably messed something up in the grammar. But um, you'll have a, a, 
you get the idea here. So this is the, the key piece of this is A, how are you deciding to format your grammar, right? How are you creating terminal and non-terminal symbols? I've chosen to use this sort of set of nested arrays. And the real key here, of course, is this recursive algorithm. So as I'm starting with one element, I expand that and then I look over those elements and call expand on those elements and call expand recursively. This function is just calling itself, calling itself, and just like computers just keeping track of everything. And then at the eventually it's gonna finish doing all that, and at the end it's gonna have this big array of all of the terminal uh, elements of this new sentence and will uh, join them with the spacebar and give you that result back, which is displayed in the browser. So again, just to summarize, I think if you want to work with context-free grammars, Using a, um, using a JavaScript library like Tracery or Rita are both great options. If you're interested in digging into the algorithm itself, um, this is now an example that kind of shows you that. And just to kind of make this point a little bit more, I want to show you that I, you can also find a whole bunch of examples of mine that do this and a little bit more. So if you go to the uh, A to Z GitHub repository, um, you'll see that I have a context, I have, I have this same exact algorithm, but packaged up into an object. So this is a, um, a context-free object that has the rules object. It has an add rule function. So you can even look at this if you want to kind of think about organizing this context-free grammar into it, its own kind of library, so to speak, much like Rita does. Rita is more sophisticated than mine. Um, so you can look at these examples. They do much in the same way of things that we, this is the exact same uh, grammar, actually. Um, you can look at this one, which actually reads it from a JSON file, does the um, haiku generation. Um, there's this other example that is, I want to show you because what it's actually doing is it's taking, this is doing something more. Um, it's using a text that I, a file I could upload or drag or paste in, but it's actually generating the grammar on the fly based on input words. So here I have the text from the rainbow Wikipedia page and I could sort of generate haikus uh, with that particular text. You know, if I made up my own text, if I refresh this and said, uh, Generate some haikus. One, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, happy dancing, rainbows, unicorn, uh, um, uh, what else, what else, uh, purple, pink, right? We could sort of see I could generate the grammar and I could generate some haikus. And you can see I don't have any, I don't have enough stuff. So I'm kind of getting some of the, these became terminal symbols because I don't have enough stuff. But if I had, you can see haikus two, unicorn, pink, pink, dancing two. So this is also something you might want to think of. And this, by the way, also has a little button where that allows me to save that. And I can actually look at um, the JSON file itself the, that the program actually generates that grammar. And you can see here, it sort of calculates and it, it sort of, it couldn't find any four syllable or five syllable words in the seed text that I gave it. Um, so I'm going to see if there's any other, um, yeah, so that's, um, I, I want to make another video where I sort of maybe tie into context-free grammars with L systems. I encourage you to sort of look at some of my other videos about L systems, which are a context-free grammar, but the, uh, the idea of them is to um, create graphics. And I will do one wrap-up video to talk about some exercise ideas that you might make, and certainly one of the things that I'll talk about, and I'm mentioning this now because I don't know if I have time to make that video today, but it'll come eventually, is you might think of what if the elements of this grammar, right, aren't words, but musical notes, or design elements, color, form. How could you use a context-free grammar to generate visual designs, generate music, other types of things beyond just text? Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this coding challenge of kind of coding a context-free grammar from scratch, and I'll see you in a future one at some point in the future.